My name is Dana Copeland. I am Director of Athletic Development here at Kojai Athletic Company in Thomasville, Georgia, Next Level Training. We do a lot with young athletes in preparation for uh, competing and one of the biggest components to competing well is sports speed. We do speed training for basketball, uh, for baseball, for soccer, basically any sport that is offered in South Georgia. Uh, we have the blessing of, of working with young athletes uh, on that component of uh, their athletic development. Uh, one of, again, one of the absolute biggest keys um, in the NFL Combine right now is guys prepare for that happens to be preparation for a 40 yard dash or being able to execute a good 40. Um, the NFL tests and, and a number of different protocols, uh, but all in all, if the guy doesn't have the speed, it can't show that time on the 40. The interview, if you will, is pretty much ended uh, once they, they go through uh, running from goal line to 40 yard line. So again, our emphasis is uh, on training and prepara preparation for guys to be able to play faster uh, as they involve themselves in sport. Now we're going to talk about a few exercises that are uh, very, very helpful in developing strength to actually have that explosive start. We start in building the sprint. We build it ground up. Everything starts with the feet, ankles, flows through knees, comes up through the hips, on through the upper body with the arm swings. And the very first uh, exercise that we go to, we emphasize, is ankle rotations with the point and flex. And each time I point and dorsal flex the foot, <coughs> excuse me, at the ankle joint, it helps to strengthen uh, for every step, for every explosive start, I mean every explosive stride that we take out on the field. So Emily's going to demonstrate that as we go through uh, just a few revolutions right here with loosening the ankle up, then we go opposite direction. And each one of these, I'm strengthening the uh, tibialis anterior along with the calf muscles. Now, we go point and flex, okay? Right there, every time we snap down and fire through those calves, it's helping to strengthen for our speed on the field. Thank you, ma'am. With the next exercise, again, we want to take a quick look at application. And because we believe why we do what we do is, is uh, much more important than just doing something. But <clears throat> as I fire again out of this start, an explosive start is going to take me straight down a linear plane or a linear path as quickly as I can get there. And as I'm firing out, <clears throat> firing through, what happens is, Emily, can you slowly bring this left leg up for me? There's uh, firing through my extensor muscles, <clears throat> excuse me, through the glute and upper hamstring. Relax it right there. Now if you can slowly just execute a few fours. One of the exercises that we do, which is very, very simple, don't add a lot of resistance to this. If I'm working with a trainer, or in my case if I'm training someone, I can actually apply a little more resistance at different places to help strengthen as she fires through, and as you can see, as I apply a little bit more pressure on her thighs, it gets a little more difficult, and I can actually now change the placement of that pressure and get more into, again, a strong or need for a really strong gluteal extension. But all in all, this exercise we refer to as a bird dog is not something that takes any fancy equipment to do. Uh, it takes consistency to develop the strength necessary to fire again off that ground and down the line. But thank you, Em. All in all, <clears throat> if I'm consistent to work it, then the muscle development will come and we can have a lot of success uh, in working an explosive start. In a training, for an explosive start. Again, just as important as the other two uh, areas of the body, <clears throat> meaning the legs and core strengthening, both sides, uh, comes upper body strengthening. A lot of athletes will neglect the arm swing or what's necessary to have uh, good fast twitch development in the arm swings because of so much emphasis again on the legs. And it's been only a few years that people have uh, incorporated as much core training as we're seeing, but the obvious is, as we talked about it, that's very important. But again, the final <coughs> element is the upper body. And for me to develop good 
explosive swing through the arms or primarily through the shoulders as you can see it um, operating in the swing itself. Um, resistance training is absolutely great and the next part of that not just doing the resistance training but practice 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 um, in strengthening the upper arms and I borrow either one of y'all anybody that wants to get on TV Joseph wants to be on TV let me get you to go seated right here first thing we want to show Bobby is Joseph in a good upright and stable position we're stable again through the midsection through the core my <clears throat> shoulders are up and open now and I'm gonna swing these shoulders in a free swing straight up straight down okay um, oh man, you're gonna have to go back and put this together <laughs> but, no, um, my brain is about to move into perfectionist mode um, I don't know if I want to reveal this, but all in all, when sprinters are working to become uh, better sprinters or athletes working to become better athletes, it's really critical that we understand um, efficiency. Where we um, don't learn to function within a straight line or efficient motion, taking all the excess out, uh, we're going to run less than um, our best times. We might be giving our best effort, but we're going to run less than our best times because of the efficiency equation. In order for me to move down the line as fast as I can, there's a Bible principle that speaks of a straight and narrow path. <clears throat> and ironically, that's the, one of the absolute first things we teach our kids when they come in is straight and narrow is a path that leads to success. Again, that's Bible, that's God's stuff. We're happy to be able to repeat it. But all in all, as we look at it, if Joseph's arms mo arm motions change in the slightest, then we understand there's also a principle that says for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So as his arms <clears throat> come across the body and we fire from side to side, what happens is it causes my body to move out of position in just little micro phases, not a whole lot, but enough, again, that it's gonna matter on that clock. So we wanna straighten everything up, get everything going straight down the line so that we get to from point A to point B as efficiently as we can with no time loss, okay? Thank you, sir. Resistance is only going to be a resistance that he can manage because, again, what we don't want is a, a lot of heavy weight that he's using uh, more of his body and, and working bad angles just to try and execute a lift. And what we want to do, <clears throat> I'm going to work primarily two things in strengthening. I'm going to work the shoulder and just that free swing coming up, extending as high as I can. Now, when we are running, when I come out of the, out of the blocks or I, <clears throat> excuse me, press out of my stance, my arm is going to swing basically with my hand coming, what we say, from cheek to cheek or from my hips up to the ear. Okay, so I'm operating cheek to cheek and <clears throat> the last part of that is going to be firing through the triceps. I can isolate the tricep muscles, which won't be as important, but they are going to factor into the equation. So I'll get <clears throat> good work, again, working a simple tricep extension to strengthen the triceps. And again, working the arm swing itself, I'm coming from cheek to cheek. I can do that in a down tripod position or as we showed with Joseph demonstrating, I'm going to sit in a good upright position and work it here. Okay, again, cheek to cheek. And I'll take these dumbbells. Now I'm working a three pound dumbbell. Bring Joseph back. Come on, Joseph. You're good. Okay, I want to talk about, um, but not so much demonstrate, um, a couple of exercises. One of them we will demonstrate, but we are a big squat people here. We really believe in uh, developing strong, explosive thigh muscles through the use of the squat, which also plays into the hip and uh, low back. But Joseph's going to demonstrate a step up. And as we take a look at this, when we're <clears throat> emphasizing this exercise, again, as we talked about building 
the sprint or the start from ground up. Our emphasis again is every time that foot comes in contact with the ground, we want to be able to fire through calf muscles through both sides of the thigh on through the hip complex. And in uh, our mental approach, we really try and get our athletes to take a look at um, the application right here. You know, every time again we step down, we snap down, we're not looking at a stride, we're looking at a, an explosion for maybe 22 to, to 25 explosions as we run down the field from, again, from goal line to the 40 yard line. Thank you, sir. Okie dokie. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, man. Um, ready? You're on. Major key in sprinting is core strength. We want to strengthen uh, through the abdominal muscles, especially the lower range of the ab abdominals, and all the muscles, the transverse abdominals, which attaches into the back, so that when I'm sprinting, the sprinter's pelvis is more upright, allowing more lift or a much quicker lift as they sprint down the field. We're going to work one exercise here. We just refer to this particular exercise as, as uh, ab strap exercises. And as he raises here, again, you can see the emphasis coming through the core muscles. And if we can train those babies to fire, fire well, fire efficiently, we have an opportunity to develop, again, a quick explosive start and then transition into a great sprint. Okay, we look at basically three components to running a good 40-yard dash. That's your start, the transition from start into the stride or actually sprinting down the runway. And in that, we believe the absolute most com important component is the start. We put a lot of emphasis and spend a lot of time on developing that start. But just to talk you through, um, as we look at it, real simple uh, elements in Remembering, excuse me, um, Pat, brother, can you cut that part out? You got it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm not sure where we are, but I'm going to start at the halfway into that start. Okay. Um, as we approach the line, one of the things that we encourage our guys to remember is that, that we want to take as much um, time off that clock as we can. So we practice using as much of what's given to us as we possibly can. Meaning some people will start with their feet far away from the start line. As we've tried to over and over take a stopwatch, press the, the start button and then come back and press the stop button as quickly as we can. Each time you're, we're going to realize that they're going to be somewhere from six uh, tenths to uh, maybe as much as uh, a full half a second. That ain't right, Bobby. We're going to back that up. There's some time. Okay. You're still good. There may be as much as six one hundredths to a uh, uh, full tenth of a second that's left on that watch each time my trigger finger is pressing. And we're talking about, you know, only maybe an inch. Uh, of distance between my finger and the watch itself, but all in all, we teach a bunch start, <clears throat> as it's called. I'm going to crowd that line as much as I can with my toe. Then I take the thumb and index finger of the opposite hand, place it right at the line. Okay, I'm going to bring the back foot forward, maybe six to twelve inches away from, <clears throat> excuse me, from my front foot. Then I'm going to take my left hand, my drive hand raise it up a little bit. I don't want to overextend it because the timer is operating. He's actually looking for the first movement. He starts the clock on the first movement that he sees. If that hand is, is way up, again, time on the clock. If that hand drops, the clock is rolling right now. So we place that hand <clears throat> right about hip level. Okay, back foot forward. We practice keeping the head down so that when I start my drive phase, that he head stays down for at least six yards. <clears throat> 